thank you very much uh, for introduction uh, and uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity uh, to talk uh, in this yeah, online seminar. So and, and today uh, I will talk about uh, this yeah, combinatorial mutation of a uh, certain lattice polygon uh, arising from uh, Daimler models. And also uh, I will introduce a certain operation which I call uh, the de deformation of uh, Daimler models. And uh, my talk is based on uh, joint work with uh, Akihiro uh, Higashitani. Okay, so uh, first uh, let me explain uh, uh, this notion, uh, combinatorial mutations. Okay, so and uh, yes, so this notion, uh, the notion of combinatorial mutation uh, uh, is uh, introduced in the context of uh, mirror symmetry uh, of phantom varieties uh, and uh, so-called phantom fan search program uh, based on based on uh, such uh, mirror symmetry uh, of phantom varieties. And so let me explain this. Okay, so first uh, let's consider X. So, so this is n-dimensional mm -hmm. of variety. So, and uh, so namely, this is a, a projective variety uh, whose anti-canonical divisor is ample. So, and uh, in the context of uh, mirror symmetry, uh, this uh, fun variety is expected to uh, correspond correspond to a certain mm -hmm. low-run polynomial f with uh, n variables. Okay, so, and here uh, this uh, corresponds means uh, first. Uh, there's a certain function called uh, regularized countdown period as associate, associated to uh, phantom variety. And also uh, there's another function called uh, the classical period of pi f uh, associated to uh, this uh, Laurent polynomial f. And uh, when uh, these uh, these guys are the same, uh, this the same, so in that case, I say that uh, this Laurent polynomial f correspond to uh, this phantom variety x. And in that case, I say that this, uh, I said, I call this F uh, mirror partner of X. And, uh, and in general, uh, so it is known that there are so many mirror partners of X. So namely, there are many Roland polynomials uh, satisfying uh, this, this property. So, uh, so I'd like to understand uh, the relationship uh, between such uh, mirror partners. Okay, so and in order to understand such relationships, uh, the notion of uh, mutations of Roland polynomials uh, introduced by uh, uh, such a mutation was introduced by uh, Akhtar, Coates, uh, Galkin, and Kasparczyk. And uh, uh, this is a certain transform transformation of uh, Roland polynomials. And uh, but uh, today, uh, I will in the rest of my talk, I will not use this. Uh, mutation of Roland polynomial, so let me omit the, the details. But uh, I should say uh, that uh, it is known that if uh, these uh, Roland polynomials uh, f and z are connected by the mutation, so then uh, uh, the classical period uh, of these uh, Roland, polynomials, Roland polynomials are the same. Okay, so, so if uh, this F is a uh, mirror partner of X, then uh, I can see that uh, this G is also a mirror partner of X. So, so in such a way, so by uh, using uh, this mutation, I can uh, obtain a lot of uh, mirror partners of X. Okay, so, okay, so next. So, okay, so, and uh, this part is a mutation of Roland polynomials, uh, which I explained in the Previous slide, and then uh, I, uh, I consider the convex hull of convex hull of uh, exponent vectors of uh, f. So then, by using such uh, exponent vectors, I can uh, define this uh, Newton polytope, and let me denote this Newton polytope by uh, p, and also uh, by considering the convex hull of yeah, exponent vectors of uh, this Laurent polynomial. Polynomial G, I can uh, obtain another Newton point of uh, Q. Okay, so and if uh, these F and G are connected by the mutation of Laurent polynomials, so then uh, such a mutation uh, induces a certain operation on operation on yeah these uh, polytopes, and uh, such an operation is called uh, the combinatorial mutation. Okay, so then. Uh, 
I can also uh, consider the toric variety uh, associated to this point of P. So, and let me denote such a toric variety uh, by XP. And also, I can uh, I can also uh, define uh, X, you know, toric, the toric variety XQ associated to this point of Q. So, and in this situation, uh, it is also known that uh, these toric varieties are uh, deformation equivalent uh, in the following sense. So, and uh, namely, uh, Nathan Hilton showed, showed that uh, there exists a flat family uh, such that uh, the fiber of uh, zero is isomorphic to yeah, this one, and uh, the fiber of uh, G infinity is isomorphic to uh, XQ. Okay, so, so, so this is a, a rough picture of uh, my um, motivation. And uh, uh, today, so in my talk, uh, I will, uh, so in this picture, I will, today, I will focus on this part. Yeah, this part. Yes. So, and uh, in particular, I, I will consider the case where the dimension is equal to two. So, so namely, the uh, combinatorial mutation of uh, polygons. Okay, so, so as I said, so, uh, yeah, yeah, although my motivation is uh, based on uh, mirror symmetry and uh, algebraic geometry, so but uh, in the rest of my talk, uh, I will focus on the underlying uh, combinatorics. Yeah, yeah, this part. Yeah. Okay, so so the next, uh, let me explain uh, this this notion, uh, combinatorial mutation. Okay, so and uh, as I said, uh, I will focus on the case where. Uh, uh, dimension is equal to two. So, so let's consider P. So this is a lattice polygon. And uh, let me assume that uh, the origin is contained in P. And uh, then I choose uh, an H of P and let me denote uh, such, an, uh, such an H by E. And then I consider uh, this W. So this is a primitive inner normal vector for the chosen H E. Okay, so then by using this uh, primitive uh, inner normal vector W, I, I define this H max. So this is a maximum value of uh, this uh, inner product and also define H uh, minimum. So this is a minimum value of, yes, this inner product. Then uh, I also consider this vector BE. So this is a primitive lattice vector satisfying uh, this condition. So namely, so this BE is orthogonal to this uh, inner normal vector W. Okay, so then by using this uh, vector BE, I consider the convex hull of yeah, yeah, zero vector under this BE, and uh, let me denote this uh, convex hull by F. Okay, so and call uh, this convex hull uh, the factor. And uh, I, I should uh, note that, uh, so the, uh, this, uh, vector BE is determined up to sign. So namely, if this BE uh, satisfies this condition, so then uh, minus B also satisfies the same condition. So I, so I may take uh, the vector minus BE as, yeah, as this uh, vector. So in that case, uh, I, I will uh, denote the convex hull of, yeah, I will denote such a convex hull by uh, minus, minus F. Okay, so I mean, uh, there. Are, so I mean, there are two choices. There are two choice or choices of uh, factors uh, f and minus f. Okay, so then uh, by using these uh, notions, uh, I will introduce uh, the combinator mutation. So, but uh, in order to give the precise definition of the combinator mutation, uh, I need uh, some yeah more additional data so but uh, today uh, in, in the rest of my talk i will not use such uh, additional data so so today uh, today I, I will give you a rough definition of the combinator mutation and uh, and it is enough for my talk okay so so uh, roughly uh, the combinator mutation of uh, this polygon, polygon P with respect to uh, this W uh, primitive in a normal vector and uh, the factor F. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, this combinator mutation is denoted by uh, this notation. And this combinator mutation is given by, uh, first I, I remove uh, minus H minimum uh, primitive uh, line segments from uh, the chosen HE. 
And then I add uh, H max times F uh, line segments to the opposite side. And uh, uh, let me explain this uh, rough definition uh, by using the following uh, example. Okay, so namely, uh, let's consider this, this uh, lattice polygon and uh, let me assume this interior lattice point is the origin. So, so this, this, this circle uh, stands for the origin. Okay, and let me denote this one uh, here by P. So then I choose this H E. Okay, so, so in that case, uh, so let, let's consider this uh, in a normal vector. So uh, this is, uh, the, this W uh, takes yeah, this form. So one uh, minus one. So then uh, by using this uh, W, I define H max and uh, this H max and H uh, minima. So in particular, uh, by considering uh, right points appearing yeah, in, in this line, I can see that uh, H minimum is equal to minus one. And also uh, by considering uh, lattice points appearing in this line, uh, I can see that uh, H max is equal to one. And also uh, I can take uh, this uh, primitive, primitive lattice vector BE as uh, uh, minus one and minus one. So actually uh, th this vector is orthogonal to uh, yeah, this uh, vector W. Okay, so and then I consider yeah, this uh, convex hull. So uh, I consider the convex hull of uh, this zero vector and this uh, BE, and uh, let me denote this convex hull by F. So, in, so this factor takes yeah, the, this form. So then uh, by using uh, these uh, mutation data, uh, let me perform the convertible mutation of this lattice polygon P. Okay, so first, as I said, I have to remove uh, minus H minimum primitive segments. So now uh, H minimum is equal to minus one. So I remove one uh, primitive line segments from uh, the chosen HE. So, but uh, in this case, uh, this uh, HE consists of a uh, sh uh, single line segments. So I remove this uh, HE. So then I add uh, H max, uh, times F line segments. So now uh, uh, H max is equal to one. So I add uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I add uh, the factor F uh, to uh, the opposite side. And the opposite side means, yeah, uh, this part. And, and when I uh, consider this uh, F, uh, okay, and uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, there are two choices of uh, the factors. So, and if I uh, consider uh, one and one, so if I consider minus B E uh, as this vector, so then I can consider uh, minus F another factor minus F. Okay. So, and uh, and if I uh, when I use uh, this factor F, so in that case uh, I. First, I remove this H E. So then I add this uh, factor F uh, on, on this side. Okay, so I remove this one and add F uh, on this side and connect these uh, lattice points. And then I can get this uh, new lattice polygon. And on the other hand, if I uh, want to use uh, minus F as, as a factor, so then I, I add this. Um, factor minus F on, on this side. Okay, so I remove this part and add minus F and uh, connect these lattice points and uh, I can get this uh, lattice polygon. So, so in, in this way, uh, I, I can obtain uh, two kinds of uh, new lattice polygons and these are uh, combinatory mutation of uh, this lattice polygon P. And the, the difference of these lattice, lattice polygons uh, is coming from uh, choice of uh, this, these factors. Okay, so, and uh, also uh, the shape of uh, these uh, polygons are different, but uh, it is known that uh, these polygons are uh, unimodularly uh, equivalent. Okay, so, uh, so this is a, a combinatorial mutation. So then uh, let me introduce another ingredient of my talk. Uh, so that is a, a Daimler model. Okay, so under uh, the basic idea, idea 
which I talk, uh, which I talk today, uh, is based on uh, the paper due to uh, Hanani and uh, uh, his co-authors, and also uh, the result due to uh, Grotta and uh, yeah, Ishi Ueda are uh, also important. Okay, so so let me uh, introduce this Daima model. So a uh, Daima model is a uh, Daima model is a bipartite graph described on a certain surface. So there are uh, several uh, Daima models, but in my talk uh, I will consider a uh, uh, bipartite graph described on the DR2 torus. So, so in my talk, a uh, Daima model uh, means a uh, finite bipartite graph described described on the DR2 torus. And let me denote such a torus by T. And here, uh, this finite means uh, the number of nodes and the number of edges are finite. And uh, this bipartite means, uh, so uh, first I, I, can, I can divide the set of nodes uh, into uh, precisely uh, two parts. And uh, in, order, in order to uh, make the situation clear, I will color uh, these uh, two subsets by two subsets by black and white. And a uh, bipartite means uh, each edge connect a uh, black node to a white node. So that is a definition of a uh, bipartite graph. So, and uh, for example, yes, uh, this is a Daima model. Yes, so and uh, so so this outer frame is a fundamental domain of the torus. So I, I identify this left hand side with the right hand side, and also uh, this top line with uh, this bottom line. And uh, and these are uh, uh, nodes of the graph uh, colored by black or white. And you can see that uh, each edge uh, connects uh, connect. Uh, black node to a white node, uh, something like this. And also, uh, I should note that uh, this is a graph on the torus. So this part, this part is connected to uh, this part, and uh, this part is connected to uh, this part, and, and so on. OK, so anyway, uh, this is a, a Daima model. And uh, I'd like to use uh, this uh, Daima model throughout my talk. So. So let me denote uh, this Daima model gamma A. Okay, so and uh, one of the important property of uh, Daima model uh, uh, is that uh, I can uh, obtain, I can construct a certain lattice polygon uh, delta gamma uh, by using uh, Daima model gamma. So for example, uh, uh, if I consider this uh, Daima model gamma A, then I can uh, construct this uh, lattice polygon. Delta gamma a. So and uh, later I will uh, explain how to uh, construct uh, this uh, lattice polygon uh, from uh, this diamond model gamma a. Okay. So anyway, uh, I can uh, construct a certain uh, lattice polygon. So and also uh, for any, it is also known that for any lattice polygon p, uh, there exists a diamond model gamma uh, such that uh, so the lattice polygon associated to gamma coincides with uh, the original, the, uh, the given lattice polygon P. Okay, so this is due to uh, Grotta and also Ishi Ueda. Okay, so, and also I should note that uh, such a Daima model, so namely a Daima model giving uh, this uh, property is not uh, unique, uh, not unique in general. So, but uh, there exists uh, at least one Daima, mo Daima model uh, giving this uh, property. Okay, so under uh, the the reason why uh, I'd like to understand this Daima model uh, is that uh, this Daima model uh, has uh, rich information concerning uh, toric geometry uh, associated to uh, this uh, polygon. Okay. okay, so anyway, so I will consider this uh, Daima model. Okay, so then uh, I can say my uh, motivation and uh, question. Okay, so uh, let's consider my Daima model gamma A again. So, and as I said, okay, so I can construct this uh, lattice polygon uh, from this Daima model gamma A. And let me denote, uh, and let me assume that uh, this uh, interior lattice point is the origin. So, and uh, let me denote this polygon by P. Okay, so, and as I uh, computed uh, in the first part of uh, my talk, uh, 
by considering uh, the mutation data uh, uh, concerning uh, this edge, uh, I can uh, consider the combinatorial mutation. And the combinatorial mutation of this polygon uh, yeah, takes yeah, this form. OK, so and, uh, also, as I said, uh, for any lattice polygon, uh, there exists uh, a certain Daimler model uh, whose associated polygon uh, coincides with uh, the given uh, polygon. So, so in this case, uh, for, let's consider this uh, mutated uh, polygon. So in this case, uh, there exists a certain Daimler model, gamma B, uh, satisfying uh, this property. OK, so and also, uh, so for this mutated uh, that's polygon, uh, there exists a certain Daimler model gamma B prime uh, giving uh, giving this uh, property. Okay, so and in this situation, uh, so my question is the following. So namely, uh, can we construct uh, this gamma B and gamma P B prime? So yeah, these these uh, Daimler models uh, from uh, the original Daima model, gamma A. Okay, so under uh, I, I sh uh, should note that uh, if I if I know the shape of the polygon, then there is a certain algorithm uh, to construct uh, the associated uh, Daima model. So, so namely, if uh, if I know if I know uh, the shape of this mutated polygon in advance, then uh, by using uh, such an Algorithm, I can construct uh, this uh, gamma B. So, but in that case, uh, it, it is uh, difficult to uh, to observe observe the relationship uh, between this uh, original Daimler model gamma A and uh, gamma B. Okay, so uh, I'd like to uh, construct this Daimler model gamma B uh, directly from uh, this Daimler model gamma A. Uh, so, not factoring through uh, these uh, polygons. Okay, so this this is uh, uh, my question, and uh, so and in order to uh, and in order to give uh, the answer uh, to this question uh, today, I will introduce the new operation which I call uh, the deformation of uh, Daimler models, and uh, I note that uh, there is another operation uh, called uh, the mutation of uh, Daimler models. And this mutation uh, can be understood uh, in terms of uh, the, in terms of Homing and Zelebinsky's uh, cluster mutation, uh, Kuiba mutation. So, but uh, such a mutation uh, does not change uh, the associated polygon. So, uh, so namely, uh, so for example, uh, I can apply the mutation uh, to this uh, Daimler model gamma A. So then I, I can obtain another Daimler model, uh, gamma A prime, uh, different from the original one, uh, original Daimler model, gamma A. So, so, so gamma A, uh, in general, so gamma A and gamma A prime are different, but the associated polygons are the same. Okay, so, so such a mutation cannot realize uh, this, this, this situation, yeah, this situation. Okay, so, so I need, uh, I need the new operation to realize this, uh, yeah, this situation. Okay, so this is uh, my uh, question. Okay, so then uh, before moving to the definition of uh, my deformations, uh, let me explain how to construct uh, the lattice polygon uh, delta gamma. Okay, so and in order to construct this uh, lattice polygon delta gamma, uh, I need a special class of uh, passes on a uh, Daima model uh, called uh, zigzag pass. Okay, so uh, let me introduce this this one. So, namely, so I say that a pass Z on a Daima model is uh, zigzag pass uh, if it makes a maximum turn to the right on a white node, and if it makes a maximum turn to the left on a black node. Okay, so let me uh, explain this uh, this notion by using this uh, figure. So this is a part of a Daimler model, and if uh, I consider uh, the path starting from uh, this edge uh, in this direction, so then I arrive at this uh, black node. So in in this case, I choose uh, leftmost leftmost edge. 
Okay, so then I arrive at this white node. So in this case, I choose uh, the rightmost edge. So this one. So then I choose left, right, left. So 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 this is this is a, a zigzag path. Okay, so and so and also an edge contained in a zigzag path is called a jig uh, if its direction is uh, black to white. And also an edge. Uh, Contained in a zigzag path is called zag if its direction is uh, white to black. And uh, but I, I should note that uh, uh, so for example this this edge is a uh, uh, jig of this this zigzag path, but uh, there's another uh, zigzag path containing this edge. So this is also a zigzag path. Okay, so in that case uh, this edge is a uh, zag of uh, this. Uh, zigzag path. Okay, so I mean, uh, each edge is uh, contained in uh, two kinds of uh, zigzag passes uh, as jig or zag. Okay, so, okay, and also uh, I should remark that uh, since this zigzag path is a path on the torus, so by considering the universal cover, yeah, this one, uh, I can lift, uh, I can lift such a zigzag path on the torus to uh, add to uh, the plane surface. Okay, so and later I, I will use I will use as such a zigzag path on the universal cover. So anyway, so this is a, a zigzag path, and then uh, I can see that uh, each zigzag path Z is a uh, one cycle on the torus. So uh, such a zigzag path can be considered as the element of uh, H1. So this H1 is. Uh, First homology group of the torus. So this is isomorphic to uh, G2. Okay, so namely uh, by considering a zigzag path, uh, I can get a certain element in G2. Okay, so and uh, when when I consider a zigzag path uh, as the element of uh, this H1, so in, in this case, I, I use this notation bracket G, and uh, I call this element uh, the slope of G. Okay, so and let me show you an example. So, so let's consider my diamond gamma a. So, and in this case, okay, so these are these are zigzag passes on a gamma a. Okay, so for example, uh, let's consider this figure. So, uh, so in this case, so if consider this path, so I should take right and left, and uh, yeah, right. And left and so on. So this is a uh, zigzag path. And uh, if I take uh, the x coordinate uh, in this direction and y coordinate in this direction, then I can see that uh, the slope of this uh, zigzag path is equal to one and one. So and uh, similarly, so these these are zigzag passes and the and these are the corresponding uh, slopes. Okay, so and also, uh, I should uh, remark that uh, sometimes uh, Daimler model contains uh, a node of Valency two, so uh, something uh, like this. Okay, so in that case, I I will uh, contract uh, such a uh, two valent node uh, in this way, and uh, this operation does not change uh, the slope. So, uh, for example, let's consider this uh, zigzag uh, path. So, and uh, if I uh, contract this uh, two valent node, then I can get this picture and uh, co co corresponding uh, corresponding zigzag path takes uh, this form this form and uh, and the starting edge yeah and uh, the ending edge are the same. So so uh, this uh, this operation does not change the slope. So and in order to construct uh, the lattice polygon delta gamma, uh, the description of uh, slopes are very important. But this operation does not change the slopes. So uh, in the rest of my talk, uh, uh, let me assume that uh, a diamond, diamond model contains uh, no two valent nodes. And uh, more precisely, if a, a diamond model contains uh, two valent nodes, then uh, I contract uh, all of them. Okay, so and uh, I can consider uh, this situation. So then, so in this situation, uh, I can consider, I can define the length of uh, G uh, denoted by LZ. 
So uh, this is defined uh, as the sum of the number of jigs uh, contained in G plus uh, the number of zags uh, contained in a jigzag plus Z. Okay, so uh, in particular, uh, this length is uh, an even number. Okay, so, and in addition, so in the rest of my talk, let me assume that a uh, Daima model is consistent. So this consistent is a kind of nice condition on a Daima model. So, so namely, so I say that a Daima model is consistent uh, if uh, it does not have uh, zigzag passes, does, does not have zigzag passes uh, satis satisfying these, uh, these conditions. Okay, so first condition is uh, this one. So uh, namely, uh, zigzag pass on a consistent Daima model is not homologically trivial. And homologically trivial means uh, the slope is equal to zero. Okay, so and also, uh, as I said, uh, I can consider, I can drift uh, zigzag pass on the torus to the universal cover, and uh, let's consider such a uh, zigzag pass on the universal cover. And, uh, and if uh, a Daima model is consistent, then uh, any zigzag pass uh, in zigzag pass does not have a self intersection. Yeah, self intersection. And also, uh, if a Daima model is consistent, then uh, any pair of uh, zigzag passes uh, does not have intersections uh, uh, with this form. So this is a, a definition of a consistent. And uh, in the rest of the, my talk, I, I I assume this condition, and I, I note that uh, my Daima model gamma A is uh, consistent. Yes. So now uh, let's consider consistent Daima model gamma and zigzag pass Z, and uh, I consider this element, this slope, and uh, let me denote this uh, slope by A and B. So then, uh, yeah, by considering uh, this element, uh, I can uh, consider each uh, slope as the element of uh, unit circle, unit circle S1. Okay, so and uh, by considering uh, so zigzag passes as the element of uh, S1, uh, I can define the cyclic order, uh, cyclic order of slopes of zigzag passes along uh, such uh, unit circle uh, S1. Okay, so then uh, finally I can uh, define the lattice polygon delta gamma. So this uh, lattice polygon delta gamma is a lattice polygon uh, whose whose outer normal vector outer normal vectors are given by the slopes of uh, zigzag passes. Okay, so so and such a polygon is called uh, zig, zigzag polygon. So and more precisely, uh, this uh, zigzag polygon is a uh, the polygon uh, satisfying uh, these conditions. Okay, so first one is uh, the set of, uh, as I said, uh, the set of outer normal vectors of uh, side segments of this polygon coincides with uh, the slope, the set of slopes of zigzag passes of uh, gamma. So, and uh, so when I consider this uh, condition, I, I should note that uh, so sometimes a Daima model has several zigzag passes having the same slope. Okay, so for example, let's consider uh, these zigzag passes, uh, Z, Z prime, Z double prime having the same slope, yeah, same slope. So in this case, uh, I assign uh, three line segments uh, to these uh, zigzag passes having the same slope. And uh, yeah, when I consider the, the, this condition, uh, I have to uh, take care of, yeah, I have to take care of uh, this point. Okay, so, and also, uh, so G above cyclic order, so namely the cyclic order determined by the unit circle uh, coincides with the cyclic order determined by, determined by the boundary of this uh, lattice polygon. So, and uh, I guess, uh, so it is, uh, it, will be, it would be a, a good way to see an example at, to, to understand uh, for understanding this uh, zigzag polygon, so let me show you an example. Okay, so uh, so again, let's consider my Daima model gamma a, and uh, as I said, uh, these are uh, zigzag passes on gamma a, and uh, these are corresponding uh, slopes. And in this case, uh, zigzag polygon takes yeah. 
this form. Okay, so actually, so uh, I can see that uh, the outer normal vectors of this uh, that polygon coincides with the slope, these coincides with these uh, slopes. And uh, I can consider the cyclic order uh, of these slopes uh, along this uh, boundary. And this, uh, I can also see that this uh, cyclic order coincides with uh, the cyclic order uh, determined by the unit circle. Okay, so, so this, this is a zigzag polygon of my diagram model gamma A. Okay, so and uh, I I note that when I consider this uh, del uh, delta gamma delta gamma so zigzag polygon I I I do not take care of uh, the position of the origin. So namely, so this uh, gamma delta gamma is determined up to uh, translations. But uh, later I will consider the combinatorial mutation of this uh, zigzag polygon. But uh, in that case uh, uh, I I will uh, uh, fix uh, the position of the origin. So, uh, namely, so in that case, uh, I will assume that uh, the origin is contained in the zigzag polygon. So, so anyway, so uh, in this way, I can uh, define the zigzag polygon delta gamma. Okay. So now, so finally, okay, so, so now uh, let me introduce uh, the new operation, uh, the deformation of diamond models. Okay, so and this deformation is an operation uh, changing uh, certain zigzag, zigzag passes on, on a diamond model. And uh, this deformation can be defined for a certain class of uh, zigzag passes, which I call uh, type one. So uh, let me introduce this type one zigzag pass. Okay, so uh, first uh, let's consider zigzag path Z and uh, Z tilde. So this is a zigzag path on the universal cover. And uh, yeah, more, more precisely, so uh, as I said, so this Z is a, a path on the torus and uh, I can lift uh, this uh, zigzag path Z to the universal cover R2. So in that case, uh, I can obtain a family of uh, zigzag passes on the universal cover whose projection on the torus coincides with the original zigzag path Z. Okay, so, and in that situation, uh, I, I denote one of such, one of such zigzag passes on, on the universal cover by so Z tilde. Okay, so let's consider such a situation. So, so and in, this, in that situation, I say that uh, this zigzag path Z is uh, type one, type one, if uh, G tilde on the universal cover intersects with any other zigzag passes on the universal cover uh, at the most once. Okay, so this is a definition of type one. Uh, and uh, then I consider the set of uh, type one, type one zigzag passes uh, having the same slope. And uh, let me denote this uh, slope by a B. And uh, I did. I will denote uh, the set of type and zigzag passes having the same slope B uh, by yeah, ZB. So then uh, I can show that in this case, uh, the lengths of these uh, type one zigzag passes are the same. Okay, so I can, I can prove uh, this one. So, and then uh, I consider a certain positive integer R and th this is a positive integer satisfying uh, this property. So namely, the half of this length minus R is also positive, uh, positive integer. And let me denote this uh, positive integer by H. And I will use this uh, R and H for defining uh, the deformation. And then uh, I, I choose uh, R uh, zigzag passes, R type one zigzag passes are from uh, this, this set. Yes. So then uh, I also take uh, non-negative integers uh, q1 to qr uh, satisfying this condition. So namely the su sum of these integers is equal to uh, h. And I, I call these integers uh, deformation weight. Okay, so then uh, uh, by using these, uh, these deformation data, uh, I can define uh, my deformation and uh, but uh, today, uh, let me discuss the case where uh, R is equal to one. 
So, and uh, of course, I, I can extend uh, my deformation to, to the case where R is greater than one, but uh, so for simplicity uh, today, let me assume that uh, R is equal to one. So, so in, in this case, uh, if R is equal to one, so I, I choose uh, just one type and zigzag path uh, from this, uh, as, from this uh, GB. And uh, in this case, H is equal to the half of length uh, minus one. So, and uh, if R is equal to one, so then uh, H is equal to uh, Q1. So, but I, I, I will denote this integer Q1 by uh, Q uh, uh, for simplicity. Yes, so anyway, uh, I'll consider, yeah, this situation. So then uh, let me introduce uh, the deformations. Okay, so under uh, there are two kinds of uh, deformations, uh, which I call uh, jig deformation and zag deformation. Okay, so, so let me introduce uh, these deformations. So first, uh, let's consider the chosen zigzag path Z uh, on a consistent, consistent diamond model uh, gamma. So, and uh, in the first step, uh, I insert a Q black nose and Q white nose in each uh, jig of G. Ah, okay, uh, when I, uh, sorry, uh, when I want to consider uh, jig deformation, so in that case, I, I insert uh, these, these nodes uh, in each jig of G. So, but uh, on the other hand, uh, when I want to consider zag deformation, so then I, uh, I insert these nodes uh, in each zag of G. Okay, so let me explain by using th this figure. So, so th this is a part of a, a Daimler model. So, and let me assume that, yes, uh, zigzag path Z takes this form and the slope is equal to B. Okay, so, and uh, when I, I consider jig deformation, so I insert uh, some black and white nodes in each jig of G. So, okay, so this, this edge and this edge is, uh, uh, jigs of this zigzag path uh, Z, so I will insert some nodes. And, uh, and uh, so let's consider the case where Q is equal to one. So in that case, uh, I insert black node, uh, one black node here, one, and one white node here, and uh, one black node here, and one white node here. So and uh, similarly, if I want to consider the deformations, uh, I, I will insert uh, some uh, black and white nodes in each uh, zag of uh, G. Okay, so uh, this is the meaning of uh, the, the first step. Okay, so then, okay, so then uh, uh, when I consider zig deformation, so then I remove all uh, zags of G. So on the other hand, it, uh, when I consider the zag deformation, so in that case, I, I remove all uh, zigs of G. So for example, so this this is a uh, jig deformation. So so in this case, uh, these edges are zag of G. So I will remove these edges. On the other hand, uh, yeah, the, these are uh, jigs of uh, G. So so when I consider zag deformation, so I remove these these edges. Okay. So this is the second step. And the third step is uh, I will create uh, the new zigzag path. G prime uh, satisfying uh, these these properties, and uh, I guess the latter condition is uh, slightly complicated. So first, let me explain this first uh, condition. So and uh, as I said, uh, in the second step, I I removed uh, these edges. So then, uh, if I connect uh, this black node to uh, this white node and this this white node to a black node appearing here and so on. So I can create this uh, new zigzag path. So, and I can see that, uh, so since uh, the slope of this uh, zigzag path is equal to B, so I can see that the, the slope of this new zigzag path Z prime is equal to minus B. Okay, so, and uh, also, so if, when I consider zag deformation, so if I uh, add these edges, so then I can create this, uh, new zigzag path uh, whose slope is equal to uh, minus minus b. Okay, so the, this is the meaning of this uh, condition, and uh, and the next condition, uh, the latter condition is uh, zigzag passes uh, passing through uh, 
jigs of G as zag uh, will be preserved. Okay, so let me explain this condition uh, by using this uh, this figure. So, so let's consider this H. Okay, so this is a jig of a G. So, but uh, there's another another zigzag path containing this H. So if I consider this uh, zigzag path, so in this case, this H is a uh, zag of uh, this, uh, this zigzag, zigzag path. So this means uh, a zigzag path uh, passing through uh, jigs of G as zag. So under this condition uh, says, uh, such a zigzag path uh, will be preserved uh, even if I create uh, the new, new zigzag path. So, so, and in fact, so if I consider the path starting from uh, this edge in this direction, so then I, I, I go, uh, I take a right, a left, right, left, and so on. So this zigzag path uh, is preserved uh, even if uh, this, uh, even if I create, uh, create this uh, new zigzag path Z prime. Okay, so this is the meaning of uh, the latter condition. Okay, so so then, okay, this is uh, the final step. So then, uh, if uh, diamond model, so if the resulting diamond model contains uh, two valent nodes, so then uh, I will uh, contract them because I'm assuming that a diamond model contains no two valent nodes. So, but yeah, this uh, the last uh, this operation is not important, so not so important. So, but I'm doing uh, this uh, for making a diamond model, uh, diamond model a simple one. Okay. So anyway, so by using these op operations, I, I can uh, obtain a certain diamond model. So, so, and when I consider the jig deformation, so uh, I will denote the resulting diamond model by this notation. And uh, when I consider the zag deformation, so in that case, I will denote the resulting diamond model by yeah, this notation. OK, so and then so I can show that the following theorem. So namely, uh, the resulting diamond models, so these diamond models are also consistent. OK, so. So this this uh, okay. So this holds uh, for the case where R is equal to one. So uh, but so if R is greater than one, so in that case uh, I have to uh, consider uh, some additional operations on yeah these diamond models uh, to obtain the same result uh, to obtain this uh, consistency condition. So but yeah this these additional operations are. Uh, so complicated, uh, so and uh, I'd like to simplify these uh, operations, but yeah, for now uh, it is hard. Uh, so yeah, today, so let me omit uh, this operation. So, but uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, there is a certain way to to uh, to get this uh, consistent consistency condition. Okay, so okay, so uh, so next, uh, let me uh, perform uh, my deformation. Okay, so okay, so let me consider my diamond model gamma a. So, and as I said, uh, the zigzag polygon takes yeah this form, and also uh, I consider let, let's consider this uh, zigzag path at z, and uh, I can show that this zigzag path is uh, type one. Okay, so and in this case, uh, the length of this uh, zigzag path is uh, one, two, three, uh, four. So uh, L z is equal to four, and uh, since uh, h is equal to the half of this length minus one, so this is equal to one. So uh, q is also e equal to one. Okay, so and uh, yes, okay. So uh, by using uh, uh, okay, and also uh, the slope of this zigzag path Z is uh, minus one and one. Okay, so and this corresponds to uh, this uh, outer normal vector. Okay, so then uh, let me perform uh, jig, de jig deformation of uh, this uh, zigzag, uh, this uh, diamond model. Okay, so in the first step, uh, so since this edge, this edge and this edge uh, are Jigs of yeah this zigzag path Z so I insert and now 
Q is equal to one. So I insert one black node here and one white node here and uh, one black node here and one white node here. Okay, so this is the first step. And then I remove all uh, zags of G. So and this one, this H and this H are zags of G. So I remove uh, these edges. Okay, so uh, this is the second step. And then uh, I connect uh, this black node to yeah this white node and also uh, this black node to yeah this white node. Then I, I can obtain new this new yeah new zigzag path uh, and I can see that the slope the slope of this uh, new zigzag path is equal to uh, minus b. Okay, so so and. Uh, the resulting diamond model contains uh, no two valent node, so so this is uh, uh, the uh, jig deformation of uh, gamma a. Okay, so this diamond model. So and in this case, this diamond model is consistent, and uh, I can also see that uh, the zigzag polygon of this uh, deformed diamond model uh, takes uh, this form. Okay, so and uh, and if so, in this case, if uh, I consider this in interior at this point as the origin. So then uh, I can see that uh, this uh, polygon coincides with uh, the combinatorial mutation of uh, this polygon P as uh, which I computed in the first part of uh, my talk. Okay, so, so I can obtain such a uh, polygon. Okay, so Okay, so this is a uh, zag deformation of uh, my diamond model. So, okay, namely, let's, con let's consider the same deformation data. So, but in, in this case, uh, I, I will insert some nodes in uh, each zag of G and remove, uh, okay, uh, zigs of G. So, I, I, and I can get this uh, figure. So, then I connect uh, this black node, uh, uh, black node to uh, this, this one and, and, and so on. So, I can get this new, yeah, new zigzag path of whose slope is equal to minus b. Okay, so and, and so this is uh, zag deformation of uh, gamma a, and so in this case I can see that uh, a zigzag polygon takes uh, this form. So and uh, the shape of uh, this polygon coincides with the combinatorial mutation of uh, this polygon uh, p. And, but in this case, uh, I'm considering the factor minus f. Okay, so uh, so as I I observed uh, in these uh, examples, uh, I can expect that that uh, there is a relationship between the zigzag polygon of uh, the deformed diamond models and uh, and the combinatorial mutation of the zigzag polygon of the original diamond model, and. Uh, in, indeed, uh, I can obtain uh, this theorem. Okay, so this is my main theorem. Okay, so okay, so let's consider gamma. This is a consistent gamma model, and uh, I, I choose a, uh, I choose a type one zigzag pass Z, and then I can consider uh, the deformation data by using uh, this type one zigzag pass Z. So then. Uh, uh, on the other hand, I'd like to consider the combinatorial mutation of uh, zigzag polygon delta gamma. So, and uh, in order to define the combinatorial mutation, uh, I fix uh, the position of the origin. So, namely, so I I fix uh, the origin zero, uh, so that uh, first I uh, I take uh, I fix the origin, so that uh, the origin is contained in uh, contained in the zigzag polygon delta gamma, and also uh, I can detect uh, the position of, of the origin uh, satisfying uh, this this condition. So, namely, I, I can uh, there is a certain position of uh, the origin satisfying uh, this condition. So, namely, h minimum is equal to minus r. So, and I'm considering the case where r is equal to one. So, in this case, h minimum is equal to minus one, and uh, h max is equal to q, and q is equal to this one. Okay. So then, uh, in this situation, so by considering this deformation data, I, I will consider jig uh, deformation and zag deformation of uh, this uh, uh, consistent diamond model gamma. And also, uh, by considering this uh, mutation data, uh, I will consider the combinatorial mutation of uh, delta gamma. 
uh, zigzag polygon delta gamma. So then uh, I can show that in this case, uh, the zigzag polygon of uh, the jig deformation of uh, gamma uh, coincides with the combinatorial mutation of uh, the original zigzag polygon delta gamma uh, for a certain factor f. And uh, also, if uh, I consider zag deformation, so in that case, uh, I can obtain the same result. But uh, in this case, I should uh, consider uh, minus factor, uh, minus f, this uh, factor minus f. OK, so this is my result. Uh, so this is a result, uh, my main result. And, uh, and uh, as before, so uh, this is a case where r is equal to 1. So, and, uh, as before, uh, if R is greater than one, so in that case, uh, in order to obtain this uh, uh, similar result, I, I need uh, additional operations. But uh, today, let me omit uh, omit uh, the details of uh, these operations. Okay, so this is uh, my theorem, and uh, okay, so this is uh, the last slide, and uh, uh, let me uh, tell you some. Uh, remarks concerning my deformations. So namely, if I take an appropriate deformation data, so then, uh, then uh, I can see that uh, these deformations, okay, so zig deformation and zag deformation are mutually inverse operation. Okay, so uh, let me explain this, this, uh, this uh, remark by using the following example. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the jig deformation of my diamond model gamma A. So, so this is, yeah, yeah, this diamond model. So, and uh, as I said, uh, yeah, zigzag polygon takes uh, this form. Okay, so yeah, yeah, this one. So, and uh, uh, it is known that uh, in the context of the combinatorial mutation, uh, it is known that if I consider a certain appropriate uh, mutation data for uh, this uh, for this edge, then uh, I can decover uh, this original that is polygon. So, so uh, the com combinatory mutation is um, uh, is uh, involution. So, and uh, in order to get uh, such an involution on the level of uh, the on the level of the deformation, uh, I will consider the deformation uh, concerning uh, zigzag uh, passes uh, 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 corresponding to uh, this edge. So, and in this case, uh, there are two line segments. Okay, so there are two uh, zigzag passes uh, whose slope coincides with this yeah, outer normal vector. And, and actually, so let's consider this uh, zigzag pass uh, G prime. So this is a zigzag pass which I created in the process of the jig deformation. And uh, in this case, uh, this uh, the slope of uh, this uh, g prime is uh, coincides with this outer normal vector. And on the other hand, if I consider this yeah, zigzag pass g double prime, so then I can see that the slope of uh, this zigzag pass uh, also uh, coincides with this outer normal vector. Okay, so then, so, so in, in order to get uh, a certain involution uh, on the level of uh, deformation, okay, so, so uh, since I, I'm considering uh, jig, jig deformation here, so in order to get a certain involution, uh, next I should consider uh, zag deformation. Okay, so, and for example, if I uh, consider the zag deformation at uh, this, Zigzag pass G double uh, G prime. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, I should say that uh, I can see that uh, this, this uh, G prime and G double prime are uh, type one. So so I can consider uh, zag deformation at uh, this zigzag zigzag pass, and also uh, I can consider zag deformation uh, at this zigzag pass G double prime. And uh, if I consider the Zag deformation at G prime, so then I can decover this uh, original diamond model gamma A. And uh, if I consider the Zag deformation at G double prime, so then I can get this diamond model. So this is opposite, opposite, opposite diamond model. So 
opposite, uh, this is opposite to uh, this one. So namely, if I change uh, this black node uh, by white node and vice versa, and then I can get this uh, diamond model. But uh, this uh, diamond model has nice uh, symmetry. So I can see that uh, these two diamond models are uh, homotopy equivalent uh, on the DR2 torus. So I can easily see that uh, the associated polygons are the same. Yeah, this one. Okay, so and uh, okay, so 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 I can get to this kind of uh, involution on the level of uh, the deformation. And but uh, I should uh, also say that uh, in general, so if I consider a general a consistent diamond model, and uh, if I consider zig deformation of such a general uh, consistent diamond mod model, so then uh, so and uh, if I consider uh, zigzag passes uh, on such zig on such uh, deformed diamond model having the same slope, so then I can consider uh, two kinds of uh, zag deformation, and uh, I can get two kinds of uh, diamond models, but and in general, uh, such a uh, two uh, diamond models are not homotopy equivalent. But uh, even if uh, they are not uh, homotopy uh, equivalent, uh, uh, I can see that uh, the associated uh, zigzag polygons are the same. So namely, uh, I mean that uh, my deformation uh, uh, gives a certain involution on the level of uh, zigzag polygon. Okay, so okay, so th that's all. Uh, Thank you very much for your attention.